Wastelanders, Vault Dwellers, welcome back to the Fallout Lorecast. It is time again. It is. It happens to be Saturday night. It has been a holiday week and slash weekend for us, so I apologize for getting this episode out a little bit late, but being that it is a holiday week, it's time for family. And since it's time for family, I happen to have a very special guest with me here today. I am your host, Tom, or Robots, as usual. And this week, my very special guest is somebody I've been trying to get on the show for almost three years now. Somebody who is my favorite human being in the whole world and um, somebody that I choose to be my favorite human being in the whole world. Somebody who I don't have to biologically be in, you know, uh, prefer because I'm, you know, connected to them because they're my children. Those are my other favorite human beings in the whole world. But um, somebody who I think is absolutely wonderful, somebody who I love talking about Fallout with, somebody who loves it uh, maybe as much as I do. And it happens to be sitting right next to me right here. And often many nights is sitting next to me right here. My wonderful, amazing wife who goes by the name Fire Shadow. Some of you would call her Mrs. Robots, who is better known as Dr. Robots because that she is actually a doctor. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining us. How is it going tonight? How are you doing? Doing pretty good. Just had some Mexican food mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. hanging out with my dog meat mug. Mm -hmm. Our tiki, our tiki glasses. We've got our tiki glasses here. I've got a vault boy. And if you're joining us on the live stream, we've got our tiki glasses with our drinks. She's got actually got a nice yummy drink. I have a uh, flavored water <laughs> because uh, alcoholic drinks are a, uh, <laughs> a trigger from, from my migraine. So I'm not doing that tonight. But um, thank you for joining me tonight. We are going to be discussing at the beginning of the show some of the things that got her into Fallout, some of the things she really likes about Fallout. And then on the second half of the show, we're going to be doing kind of a what if brainstorm because we've been doing these what if episodes for this month. And we got to talking about some what if possibilities for this episode. But then we had so much fun just brainstorming what if concepts that we wanted to bring you guys into the conversation so that's where we're going also we're sitting right next to each other we're doing the best we can in order to minimize the echo with the microphones but if a little bit of the echo does come through i apologize i will try to talk more quietly in order to make sure that that doesn't happen but I, let's start this off let's start, start this off fire shadow lady fire shadow can we use your first name or you just want to go by fire shadow you can use my first name. So this is this is Laura, my wife, Laura. So Tom and Laura, this this who we are. And you can call her Mrs. Robots or Dr. Robots or Fire Shadow or Laura. And Laura, I know you and I, we've been married for quite some time now and we enjoy video games together. This is something we do a lot. We play a lot of video games in our house and we have a lot of uh, Fallout stuff in our house. In fact, you can see the other side of this room. Our office is decorated with Fallout stuff. There's a bunch of things over on the, the wall next to you, actually, that you can't even see. You, you even have a stand with a bunch of little Fallout guys over there. Um, do you have memories of like how you got into Fallout? Do you remember this? I know it, we're thinking like way back. Yeah, I remember like starting to play Fallout 3 and just exploring this new world and wanting to put everything in my pocket and not ever having enough space in my pockets for all the things I wanted to pick up. And that was really what drove me in the game to explore new areas was finding new items mm -hmm. and new collectibles, whether it was, I mean, the top of the top was the little vault boys, right, that I could put on my display, uh, followed by, you know, like different outfits. And I didn't really want to wear the outfits, but I wanted to have them in my closet, right? I wanted to have them for rainy day um, and I wanted to fill my pockets so that way i could sell them to the local vendors right and make as many caps as possible so i think that's what drove me through the game and i feel like that's what i remember it like starting out as and what really kind of kept me in the game was just collecting yeah yeah and uh, we've talked about this a little bit you and i have uh different approaches to playing these games um I i've of course built this show around digging into the lore and the stories and the characters and those kinds of things but your your approach to these games is very different. And I think you probably have a lot in common with a lot of the people who got into these games from the perspective of just wanting to play them and then uh, dug into the stories later. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like when you play these games, your, your focus is like you're saying is mostly on collecting things and, and getting through the the experience of just exploring and um, 
you mentioned we were talking about this at dinner. You mentioned that oftentimes you don't go where the game tells you to go. Yeah, so I often just want to see my map fill out. I really want to see like the gray areas on the map fill in with names. And so often that's what made me explore. I mean, I would collect all the quests and I would complete all of the quests I possibly could. Um, and I would fill up the log to the maximum. But I really wanted to see the map filled out. And so I would just kind of adventure to new areas, probably before it was very safe to do that. And mm -hmm. sometimes in like Fallout 3, when the world didn't level with you as much, um, that would make me in little sticky situations where I had to uh, pop off certain areas and come back later. But I really wanted to like fill out that map and see all of the areas highlighted. Uh, the like completionist in me, the, you know, Spyro 100% as a child, you know, kind of came through and I, I really wanted to complete it all. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure some of the people in chat right now can probably uh, connect with you on that on that level. Um, when it when it comes to actually playing the games, what what was your what was your go to method? Like, did you did you play with a lot of companions? Did you go by yourself? Did you engage with certain types of weapons and armor? Did you want to suss out a very specific storyline first? I mean, you, you said oftentimes you were just like going from one place to another. What kind of methods did you use on the ground actually engaging? So I think my method is mainly like Leroy Jenkins, you know, just kind of like popping in the door and doing my best to like hang out and survive as long as possible. Um, I'd, so I would wear as much heavy armor as I could. Uh, I know it like filled up my pockets, but if I was wearing it, then it wouldn't fill up my pockets as much. And so I would defend myself with heavy armor. I'd have like an SMG or an assault rifle. And so that way I could shoot a lot at the same time as having, you know, my heavy armor. And I would just kind of pop in the door and, and like have at it as it as it went. Right. And try to use vault uh, vats to kind of like, you know, chill it out a little bit uh, and navigate it. But I would really just pop in the door and and make it happen. Yeah. Just like busting down the door and just like, all right, I'm taking you guys out. Like you, 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 I would sneak around and I would try and take things out from a distance, but you would always just kind of like bust a door down and just like you just take on guys. You were just like, all right, I'm coming in here, I'm just blowing everybody up. Here we go. Um, we have very different perspectives on how we would handle that stuff. Also, you would often just kind of skip through a lot of the dialogue. Um, you're just like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. Get to the next thing. Get to the next thing. Let's just move the quest along. Um, now, when it comes to the the setting of the world, though, you what is it that you enjoy about the setting of the world and the things that you encounter in the world? What really stands out to you? I like that each of the main games were in places that I had visited in real life. And so seeing some of the structures that I have you know, toured around as a tourist um, and kind of seeing them in their post apocalyptic uh, stance was really appealing to me. And so I like to go into reminiscent buildings um, and see kind of semi-familiar things. Um, so that was a good part of the world for me. You know, DC, Boston, Las Vegas, um, those were uh, places I had been to at least once when I played each of those games. And so I think that that was a big draw for me. Uh, West Virginia, I haven't been to. Um, so hopefully I can see that from the other perspective, right? Visiting it after playing through it in the world. Um, but, you know, for the main Fallout games before 76, you know, those were places that I had been. So I think that that was really appealing to me, you mm -hmm. know, having having those locations. What about the um, like vintage music and old style uh, language and the references to all of these vintage things, but set in kind of a sci-fi of the 1950s and 60s setting how do you feel about all of that yeah that was definitely really appealing i mean since we do a lot of vintage dancing um you mm -hmm. know in our young our young years uh, <laughs> it wasn't that long ago <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know a lot of that music made me want to keep playing and made me want to you know get up and dance um and so i like listening to the radio particularly on the stations that matched you know a lot of those vintage jazz songs that would play in some of the cities, you know, from different like iBots and different, you know, radios that were around in the town. Um, and so I think a lot of the music 
drew me in more um, than just the location. So I think that was an added experience for me that was appealing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what about the what about like the monsters and the creatures and stuff? I think the first time around, it was really unspect- unexpected. I didn't expect such mutated creatures. I didn't really know anything about the Fallout world before I started playing Fallout 3. So even seeing like giant cockroaches was, you know, a whole nother experience, you know, as a first player game. Um, and then, you know, my first uh, death claw. <laughs> Right, that uh-huh. that's always an experience. Like, what is this? Oh God! Turn around, turn around, turn around. Turn around. <laughs> How can I go in a door somewhere? How can I get away from this thing? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so I think that it was even after you see some of them, you still unex you, you don't expect all of them. You know, I, I still think there's surprises as you go along the way, and I I think that's part of the fun um, from experiencing it. You know, in the world as is, and kind of coming upon it as someone coming out of a vault, right. right? And seeing these things for the first time, I kind of had that experience along with my character because I didn't uh, look up those things ahead of time and, and know about them in Fallout 3. And so then re-seeing many of them um, in future games and then having a couple added creatures like mole miners and those things. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it was kind of a brand new creepy experience, right? But, um, you know, like mole rats were enough. We didn't need miners. <laughs> <laughs> so you played through them in chronological chronological order, starting with three, because the three was your first one. The three was my first one as well. And how do you feel about each one in the series? Like, do, does three have like, is that your favorite because it was your first experience? And then you moved on to New Vegas for and 76. Or do you have like, like, well, how do, like, where do you position them in your in your in your mind in your heart and then like also the dlcs how did how do those play into how much you love each of the games yeah so i think pod three is the best one from my experience mm-hmm. uh, followed by the fallout three expansions and then the fallout four expansions were my next favorite um probably followed by new vegas and then fallout four um and i have uh grown an affection for fallout 76 it's a different experience i enjoy playing together Mm -hmm. that part is really fun i enjoy the crafting in 76 which i never enjoyed in fallout 4. yeah Um, yeah uh, so you know that has been a kind of a new experience i think that's why fallout 4 was lower on my enjoyment list was because some of the settlements um kind of maintenance and house maintenance and world building was not a part of the fallout experience i wanted to have um fallout 76 is finally making some of those experiences kind of worth it and enjoy and a lot of enjoyment from them because of some of the items that are available now uh to pick from to you know uh, make my house look cool make my vault look cool right um so i I think, um, you know, Fallout 3 is hard to beat um, just because it was so new. Everything was new to me um, and everything else feels like a version of that game. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's why they all kind of follow that game's experience, because it was my first experience with the world of Fallout, which I think is amazing. Yeah, it's hard to beat the first time you discover something and you feel like uh, like the surprises the way that you stumble upon things in Fallout 3 when it was your first time and you're like, oh, this is in the world and the, these things are possible and oh, ghouls and uh, feral ghouls and what happened to the people and how old are these people? And all the discoveries the first time are all so groundbreaking. And then you go through that again and it's, you know, a little bit added on top. And then you go through it again and it's a little bit more added on top. And one of the things that was so big for people in Fallout 4 was the was the crafting and the building. But you weren't as big into it in that one. That one just just didn't stick with you as much. Um, so I get why that wasn't as big of a deal for you at the time. And then 76 is something that's growing on you as as it gives you more things to collect. Um, and I know uh, from our conversations that some of the collectible stuff are some of your favorites, like tracking down all the baubles in Fallout 3 or discovering that there are more types of Nuka Cola to find. Um, things like that. Can you talk about it? Uh, some of that, some of your experience with that. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, I mean, having my first bobble bobblehead display inside of my vault in Fallout 3 was kind of the ultimate experience as a collector. Um, and then going to my first uh, Nuka-Cola factory was really, I don't know, I really wanted to search out every single crevice of that factory because I just found it so fun. So then having Nuka World as an expansion in Fallout 4, um, that was a really fun experience. And so um, I think some of that has been watered down in, in Fallout 76 because there's multiple copies of each of them. And so for me, you know, being able to collect multiple copies of the luck bobblehead, you know, having six copies of, of luck or of lock picking, you know, it kind of takes away a little bit of the fun of collecting it. So I wish there was another layer on top of that that made some unique collectible uh, that I could go after, um, you know, that wasn't on some like searchable map online that was just kind of me finding it in the world um, yeah. as I did in the original ones. Right. Um, and so that really you know kept me in the game looking around in new places and why one of the reasons why i wanted to see all of the map um you know show the locations because i wanted to search right each of those and go into every house go into every mailbox go into every basement you know which then you stumble upon mm -hmm. uh, secrets right behind each of those communities right finding their hidden bodies that they were eating <laughs> off of or <laughs> Um, you know, the way that they uh, lived, right, as a community and interacted with each other. And so there's a lot in the Fallout world that isn't in the text. And so those things were more obvious for me because often the text I kind of skipped through because I really wanted to continue enjoying the world. And the text part wasn't the part that, you know, was most enjoyable for me. The environmental storytelling, the things that you discovered when you showed up in a situation, interacted with the, the people there. And you started to go, oh, this is what's happening here. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt you guys while you were feeding on your neighbors. Yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, when it comes to the DLCs, I know that you have some favorites. There are some that really stand out for you. Um, there's a specific one that's your favorite from Fallout 3. Which one is that? Definitely Aliens. The Aliens uh, expansion is amazing because it's so different than everything else in the world. It seems so reasonable to be a possibility, I guess. And um, you get additional weapons that allow you to kind of bust into any room and survive and take out anyone that's coming against you. And so definitely the alien expansion uh, from Fallout 3 was the best. Um, in Fallout 4, I actually enjoyed the expansions more than the game. Um, so I would... Um, yeah, definitely recommend the expansions even over the base game in Fallout 4 because they're so interesting. They're so different than the base game. Um, there's one where the computer systems are right, basically leading you along and you're having to do all these different quests. Um, it's very comedic. Um, and so I really like the sense of humor of Fallout. And so you really get a sense of that in some of the DLC that they don't get to always work into the the base game and so mm -hmm. i think um yeah it, it adds another layer to the games that you don't necessarily get with only playing the straight game right right and then um fallout 4 i know nuka cola particularly has a place in your heart and the, the nuka cola world stuff is a big one for you how do you how do you feel about that one yeah, I basically wanted the theme park to be uh, like a giant factory of Nuka Cola. <laughs> I really wanted. I wanted to find all of the quantum and you know cherry and you know all of the different iterations. Um, and so, Cappy, I, Cappy, I kept looking for the different Nuka Cola bottles um, in the Nuka Cola world, um, and. You know, there's there's orange and the cherry and and the quantum. And, you know, I kind of wanted to keep finding I wanted there to be like 50 different versions of Nuka Cola, <laughs> some like test factory. Um, so I never quite found that. Um, but it is quite fun to be in a theme park that is themed after some of your favorite things in a game. So I, I think the um, entertainment that comes from the characters of bottle and cappy does bottle have a name i don't know that bottle has a name um it's bottle, bottle yeah bottle and cappy 
is pretty good, even yeah. with the creepiness of Cappy. <laughs> with how creepy Cappy is. Oh, poor Cappy. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell you what, I think now is a good time for us to take a break and thank our sp- our uh, sponsors, our patrons, who are our sponsors, and we'll be back in a second, and we're going to brainstorm some good what if ideas. So we'll be back in just a little bit. Hello there, old chap. Good to see another of General Atomic's finest still eager to serve. All right, so here we are in the middle of the show. This is the part of the show where we get to thank our patrons for being so awesome, and thank you to our new patron, our newest patron, N Seven Stormtrooper. For signing up and helping to support the show thank you to you we have really appreciate the support and also thank you to um jared b our liberty prime or liberty pie man he goes by pie man and also southern rage and stagger and stumble our sentry bots for supporting our show there are tier five patrons and thank you to all the other patrons all 53 of you guys for helping to support the show you guys are awesome thank you so much for all of your support and if we've done anything to help you get through your work day your work week your work time your work commute your work out or working on those the the turkey that was left over because there's a lot of it and i know that you're probably filling your stomachs with all the leftovers then go to patreon.com slash lorecast and check out all the different tiers check out all the different things you can get ad free episodes t-shirts and even the potential to join us on the end of the month patron episode which is coming up because it will be on Tuesday, just a few days away on the 30th at 9 p.m. Eastern. So make sure that if you are one of our tier four or higher patrons and you would like to join us on that episode, that you're able to do so on this Tuesday night, just a few days away. And if you aren't already signed up and you want to join us, now's the time to make sure you can do that. And we will be chatting with you in just a few days. So thank you to all of you guys. You guys are the best and we will see you very, very soon. All right, let's get on with the rest of the show. If you have any questions about Nuka World, I'd be delighted to answer them. All right, so this is this is the second half of the show, and we're going to brainstorm some fun what-if ideas. And these are going to be just out there and wacky because we were, we were having some conversations. And this just kind of came up because I, we were discussing, like, hey, wouldn't it be fun if we did some what if episodes? And you're like, well, what kinds of things are you talking about? And I was like, well, what if this and what if this? And then you started throwing out ideas at me. And then we, have, of course, when we're just kind of goofing around at dinner, having a good time with the family and it just got super silly. And I was like, this could totally be an episode of the show. And so now it is an episode of the show. So the floodgates are open. Let's just start throwing out ideas. And this this can be anything. Are you ready? I'm ready. You ready for this? Now, do you have any in, in mind if you if if we were to just set out some some ideas into the universe for potential future what if episodes for the Fallout lore cast for me and whoever happens to be the future guest host to talk about what kinds of ideas and chat? Feel free to throw out some what if ideas as well, because we if you know, you throw out some in here and we're going to we're going to highlight them as well. So so uh, Fire Shadow, you got any good what if ideas off the top of your head? Right. What if the special had an extra letter or one less letter to it? What would it be? <laughs> what the special? That's not like like strength, perception, uh, all of that stuff. So uh, instead of ending in L, it would also have an extra C for constipation level. And then you could or couldn't poop, depending on your digestion based on the foods that you've eaten that day. That's what I would add. What would you add? Um, I think I would make maybe like a trade-off between the options. So like if you had more luck, you would have less intelligence or something like that. <laughs> so like they were where, directly connected. Where certain ones kind of couldn't go with each other, right? Where you couldn't be as strong and as agile as mm-hmm. possible, right? Where they were kind uh, of connected. So uh, I think I would um, emphasize that and maybe certain ones remove certain other letters, uh, like having bonuses <laughs> above normal. Sixer in chat says specials with an extra S at the end. What does the S stand for? And then uh, the Psy guy TTV in chat says special K. <laughs> I think we should guess. Uh, um, the S stands for saliva. It has to do with how hydrated you are 
at any point in time. <laughs> and, the, and the K? And the K stands for, oh, there's not very many words that start with K. This one's tough. Um, keratin, which manages your eyesight. <laughs> it stands for super. Oh, there you go. Six series. It stands for super. Special K brand cereal. Just thought it was funny. There you go. Uh, kilos. K stands for kicks. And kicks. so then you walk with all kicks. Okay, they're like a like a Nazi marching. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, there we go. Okay, so here's here's one. What if all the music wasn't based on like the 1930s, 40s, 50s and 60s? What if all the music was mariachi bands? I think it would make me feel more hurried in my searching around a room. I think I couldn't like explore a file cabinet as long as I do. Uh huh. Um, mm -hmm. and sit and kind of read every single memo on the desk or click through them as I do. By read, I mean like click on them. Uh -huh. Well, it doesn't always have to be fast mariachi bands. Like mari mariachi bands can play ballads too. So it could be like, it could be like mariachi ballad music also. So like, of course you're gonna have like that. Actually, that's a, that's already in the game. That's Ring of Fire. That's... <laughs> But okay, so um, okay. What if all the music, instead of being thirties, fifties, thirties, forties, fifties, and sixties music, was polka? It's almost the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, I don't. I don't know that that would change so much. It might change, like, yeah, my walking around and like my my attitude mm -hmm. a little bit. But mm -hmm. um, I I don't think it would be an improvement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what if uh, Sixer in chat says, what if the super mutants weren't like the Hulk? What would they be? What if they were all Smurfs? Really small, really strong Smurfs. Like lots of them. So would they be many? Would they be as big? And they were just kind of like... Just lots of little guys that were just really, really strong. Like ants. You know how ants can pick up like multiple times their, their body weight? Like what if they were as strong as super mutants? And they also talk like super mutants, but they were like Smurfs, like little itty bitty guys. <laughs> That'd be pretty hilarious if they had the same voices as super mutants, right. but were as small as right. Smurfs. Like you, you busted into a new place and you heard, who's there? And you look to the side and there's just like this little itty bitty dude who's like three inches tall on the ground look, looking up at you. Do you think that we would use like binoculars or like a scope? If a scope, or would you just like step on them and then that would be fine? Well, but they'd be super strong and like dense. And so you'd step on them and then they just pick you up and throw you against the wall. And then you'd be like, whoa, not doing that again. You got any other more what ifs? What if um, the brotherhood were made of your, of your brothers? <laughs> what if the brotherhood was actually your siblings? How many brothers do you have? Too many. Too many that's, brothers. That's a lot of siblings. How how many mothers do you have? How many? Are they all biological brothers or are you like adopted? I think biological. I think it would have to be biological. Oh my gosh. How many, how many members are in the brotherhood? I mean, would it change? The brotherhood oh, the would just same be two people. What? Okay, wait, wait, no, no. So, with, like, my brother? <laughs> like, I have one brother, so the brotherhood in the game would be the same as my actual brother, or the brotherhood in the game would have the same amount of people that are actually in the brotherhood in the game, and somehow we're all biologically related. And you could, like, actually tell them what you think, because some of them are jerks. Ah, ah, okay. So, we've got, we've got some others here in chat. Sci-Fi Guy says, what if Fallout incorporated all eras of music, including 2000s? What would you think would be some must-haves in the wasteland. Ooh, um, I will survive. Obviously, that'd be a good one. That'd be a good one. Um, uh, what else? What else would be a good one to include? Two thousands, no doubt. Gotta happen. Is there a specific song? I'm just a girl. I'm just a girl. Yeah, for like when you're wandering around the wasteland, it's just a girl. That would make sense. In my charm life by Third Eye Blind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We need some like more recent ones though. What about? Um, uh, mm, something really, really, some uh, something really, really cheesy, but recent. Baby Shark. Baby Shark. Yes. 
I think you should play that every time a Meyer Lurk comes. <laughs> <laughs> a Meyer Lurk, when a Meyer Lurk shows up, it just, it just plays Baby Shark. Yeah. It's like Psy Guy says uh, Slipknot. Um, <laughs> Austin Adams says, this is kind of from left field, but but if uh, the had not wait sorry fallout europe would be the factions be like world war ii sorry this sentence is difficult to read like the german faction be like nazis and so on maybe um sixer writes what if the enclave were the good guys in fallout one mm, does that change your perspective or theirs <laughs> that's a deep <laughs> like hmm i mean they think they're the good guys so there barbie girl some people do think they're the good guys yeah, Barbie Girl would be a hilarious song. Yeah. Yeah, that right, needs to be a blue. mod. Yeah, there you go. Blue, Baba Dee, Baba Dow, Baba Dee, Baba Dow. Yeah. Okay, whose who's theme song would that be? Maybe there's one blue super mutant. Well, there are. The Nightkin are all blue. So whenever you walk into yeah, a Nightkin yeah. base, they would have the I'm blue, Baba Dee, Baba Dow, Baba Dee, Baba Dow. Yeah, that song would be playing every, in every Nightkin base ever. Absolutely. Yes, villain. Every villain is the hero of their own story. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. All right. You got any more uh, what ifs? What, what if, if? Oh, you got one. Okay. Go ahead. What if miniguns didn't take so long to charge up or as heavy in your pockets? Would you use them more? Uh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Miniguns are amazing, but they're not. Right. So like maybe we could mod them to be better. What if miniguns were mega guns? Mm -hmm. sounds better right and so instead of a bunch of little bullets they had a bunch of big bullets in a big round thing are those rocket launchers yes i think that's what those are called <laughs> those are just those are already in the game <laughs> those are just rocket vehicles you're right those are things um what if instead of being a human you could be an alien you came up with this one earlier at dinner yeah, I would like that. I, I would like to I come into the you. world on the alien ship uh -huh. and explore the world as an alien. I think I would feel like even more sense of wonder and like even more sense of like, will you be my friend as like the ghoul is running towards you. Uh -huh. <laughs> and like, I don't I don't know if I would speak any of the language or not, you know, no, you that would, just would speak, be like part of the fun. You just speak Zetan. Right. I think that's part of the enjoyment of it because you can't understand any of them. So all of them could potentially be your friend because you don't maybe understand the tone even. Maybe your tone is different. Happy, sad, angry tones. Every time you'd meet anybody, they would just freak out. Yeah. And you're like, hey, hi, nice to meet you. And they would just run at or away from you and you'd mm -hmm. be okay with either because you're like just curious of what's going on. So if uh, they're also little, would you be able to ride around on dog meat like a mount? Like a Skyrim horse? I hope not. I don't want to ride around on dog meat, but like maybe a boat fly? A bloat Do you fly? ride around on a bloat fly? Speaking of bloat flies, another one you came up with earlier. Do you remember the other bloat fly one? Like what if they threw up all the time? Right, but or, but also then one about the name. What if bloat flies were goat flies? You came up with that one. I came up with that one. What if bloat flies were goat flies? And then there was something else. What if uh, what was the other one with the name? Um, oh, what was it? What was it? We had a good one. Oh, I don't remember. Mm, well, it'll come back to us. So we've got some more from from chat here. Uh, what if we got a PAL portable artillery artillery launcher similar to an auto grenade launcher it launched artillery shells and anti-tank air rounds that would be that would be very effective I think it depends on how complicated it would to like call it so like in Fallout 76 right you can go around and get the like launch codes for something that's kind of similar to that mm -hmm. but I haven't done it once at all because you have to collect them all at once right and launch them so I haven't done it but it'd be fun if it was simpler. Yeah. And I could do it because I get distracted. I want to pick up things on the way. And so I kind of never make it around to collect them all. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, Kit Calavara. I hope I pronounced your name right. 
uh, writes, might be crazy, but what if those eldritch horrors we see in three and four might be pulling the strings that caused the Great War to happen? Ancient gods causing all the trouble. That could be it. That could be it. What do you think about that? I think there could be a possibility already. Might be. Might be. So what if you could uh, be the leader of a vault? What would your vault be like if you were the overlord, the overseer? Uh, free pizza every day for everybody. And, and what would that turn your vault into over 100, 200 years? Really fat people. So they turn into like anime roly characters yeah, they'd by the end? Like, they'd be like everybody on um, uh, Wally, like the, the people in space who just floated around in those like fat people chairs. Yeah. And that'd be your yeah. only rule. Pizza every day. Pizza every day. <laughs> That's fun. What would your vault be? Uh, my vault would be make more bobbleheads. You gotta come up with new bobblehead characters. Uh, so you, your way, not, your vault. Not more of the same, unique ones. Your vault would basically be more marketing for Vault Tech. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, but like niche marketing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like one of a kind. So I've got another one. What if Death Claws are just deeply misunderstood and just want hugs? They're really showing it the wrong way. Yeah, but what if they're just like, I need a hug. And then you're like, oh, God, and then you shoot at them and then they get angry. But what if they just really just want hugs? Yeah, I think that that's hard to understand. Uh, I mean, they're big guy. and scary, but maybe they just need more hugs. What if you could only carry what you could actually carry? Like physically carry like as a human being. So like, yeah. Like a regular person walking around would get exhausted if you had to regularly carry about 50 pounds worth of stuff. Right. And like maybe your Nuka Cola is broke in your backpack, still <laughs> all over your other things. <laughs> like you get like you're in a battle and you fall down and somebody hits you, you fall down and then you just break all the Nuka Cola and all the, like the leftover food and stuff in your backpack. Every, like you fall down and all of a sudden your backpack's just wet. And like, and you're like, oh crap, I broke all my supplies. I mean, you still have your caps, so that would be really sad. Yeah. Yeah. Also, what do you store your caps? In? Like, how many caps can you carry? Like, think about it. How many times in the game have you had like a thousand caps all stored up? How many caps can you fit in your backpack? Maybe just a thousand. Can, I don't know. Can you fit like they take they take space. Can you imagine running around the, like, the wasteland with a thousand caps in your backpack? You'd be jingling all over the place. Everyone would know. They'd be like, oh, there goes Mr. Moneybags. You wouldn't fit anything else in your backpack. What if they turn into like a one bigger cap instead? And then like you can a different put it on your head like a big hat and then just strap it around your chin. It was just like one big cap. Hey, you could just have it as a necklace. It was like a cap cap. Oh, it was like a clock. Like, um, oh, what's his face? The, the rapper used to wear. Um, somebody's going to know. Somebody's yelling at their at their phone right now be like oh my god tom it's so-and-so um yeah that'd be cool you would just be known as like but that would be so easy to flavor flav yeah yeah flavor flav somebody like but you'd be so easy to steal right plus also if you got shot at two things one maybe it would deflect the bullet two it would also cost you money every time you got hit because it would break it and then you just lose money but that could be a perk it could be like cap shield it 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 guards you from bullets but you lose money every time you get hit i like it that could work i mean that would work for your some situations that would work for your whole like steal all the things around you sell it for money use it as armor so you can bust in like that totally works for your build i think that's okay and as long as you survive you can go back and pick up all the caps on the way out <laughs> like it chips the, it chips the caps off and then you just go collect them back and like like glue them back into the big cap like if you survive, they're collectible. Ah, I see. I see. Okay. All right. I could, that could work. What if you could, what if you could use caps and just like stick them all into each other and just build power armor out of caps? You could just have this big suit of armor, like caps armor. I think I would do that if it was just as strong as regular power armor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it would look better. 
it would be a nice place to store my caps. So, I mean, I know they don't take up space in our pockets, but in our fake world, they may. Yeah. And so then it would make them not take up space, right? Because they're our armor. Right. And then right. you can like piece it back together easy, right? Because it's just like cap by cap. You just glue them on with some Gorilla Glue and good to go. Yeah. Anybody who, so let's change gears here. Anybody who's been to my live streams in the morning over on, on the Robust Radio YouTube knows how creepy Cappy is. And Kit here in chat has a very good point. What if Nuka World is a hidden cult? Cappy kind of has the cult leader vibe. What do you think? I think that's really unfortunate because like Cappy's really creepy, but Nuka World is so cool. Yeah, but, and, like, but I kind of want to visit that, that creepy world even with the creepy Cappy. Cappy's all over that place. It's like it's just like happy propaganda all over that thing. Yeah, I'm kind of into it. What about so, bottle? Do you think bottles in on it? A bottle's too innocent. Not bottle. Not bottle. Happy's like the brain of bottle, right? Like what's think- on top. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think bottles like the like the beefy dumb one and Cappy's like the little big brain one? I mean, I think Bottle's even the non-beefy dumb one. Oh, you know? poor Bottle. Kind of fragile. That's rough. Empties too much if, like, moves around. Oh. Mm. Mm. Your, your pal. Yeah, we do use caps for currency. Maybe it was all part of Cappy's master plan. That's a good point, Austin. Austin Adams in chat says that. This might be, maybe, maybe Cappy engineered the whole thing maybe we're on to something what if cappy engineered the whole thing maybe, maybe cappy dropped the bombs and brought about the end of the world in order for caps to raise in value especially bottle caps from nuke cola drinks so that caps could take over the world happy's dream was to be the like on the face of all the currency. Right. Cappy wanted to be the most valuable thing in the wasteland. And Cappy won. I think we solved it, guys. What if caps weren't the currency? It was Nuka-Cola bottles? Well, then bottle is the mastermind in that in that scenario. <laughs> Sixer. And much more fragile. Much bigger. Yeah, harder. Much more harder fragile. To store. That's a, that's a tougher thing as a collectible. Yeah, yeah. Sci Guy. That's but way that's less good, menacing. Right, Sci Guy. That's a, that's a good point. We we can't let Coca Cola gain access to ICBM. So that's that is the lesson from today's today's episode. Um, I think. Do you have any more what ifs? Because I feel like I feel like we've reached a conclusion that is groundbreaking. I think that we may have uncovered hidden lore. Our minds all put together here, friends, have uncovered hidden lore that has never been uncovered before in the world of Fallout. This is groundbreaking stuff. Any other thoughts? Dr. Robots? <laughs> Fire Shadow? I mean, there are plenty more what ifs, but I don't know any of them top our current groundbreaking lore. Mm, that's a good one. Here's, here's one final one from Psy Guy. What if, and hear me out, Robots Radio never existed? And then all of a sudden, I just close the stream. <laughs> Power down. Well, guys, thank you for joining us. Do you have anything else you want to share before we go? Fire Shadow, Laura, my wonderful wife, anything you want to share about you or Fallout or ways people can reach out to you or any? This is normally the thing I do at the end of the show because people have like their own little projects and things. But you're not super involved on the Internet. You just kind of like you kind of do your own thing. Yeah, I'm not super on the internet, so if you want to get a hold of me, robots is probably the best way to get a hold of me um, because I mainly don't do the internet too much. Um, I make science instead. Um, So I I just enjoy Fallout as a world and enjoy playing it from time to time. And I feel like it's one of those things that like I'll dive into for hundreds of hours and then take a break for six months or a year and then dive into for another hundred hours. It's one of those things I have to like set aside months for. Um, so I'm not always playing it currently because it's so much of like a world enriching uh, experience. Um, and so I, if you haven't tried it, I would highly encourage you to. You don't always have to play it for 
um, the reasons other people play it. Um, I always play it to just put things in my pocket. And Robots has always told me to um, have unlimited pocket space, but I find that to be overwhelming. <laughs> and so keep the linings of your pockets as they are because it doesn't help to have more of them. So just hoard more. I never understood this. I'm like, if you're going to spend all of your time just managing your inventory, then just pick up everything. Just mod it so that you can just keep adding stuff. And she's like, no, no, it, it'll become overwhelming. And I'm like, it's just, eh, just don't I'll worry. I'll literally about it. pick up every pencil. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th thank you for joining me. And I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. Sorry if there's a little bit of an echo, but we're trying to do it in the same room and we're doing the best we can. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I will be back next week at a more normal time because it will not be a holiday week. And um, thank you for being here as usual. And of course, you guys know all the different shows on the network over at robotsradio.net. I do a bunch of lore casts. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this one and go check out things like the Elder Scrolls lore cast or the Witcher lore cast or the Mass Effect lore cast. We're coming up on season two of The Witcher. We are recapping season one. I hope you guys go check out that if you are into that, that show as well. It's super cool. Um, also, the Starfield lore cast is going to start doing more episodes as we get closer and closer to that. That game is going to be freaking amazing. I'm so excited for that as well. Also, lots of fun we're having over on the Robots Radio YouTube channel with our morning streams, playing Skyrim and modding that out. So head over there and check that stuff out as well. We've got a, a wheel where um, I've come up with a story for it. Sheo Gorath has cursed my Skyrim playthrough with the Wheel of Chaos, which of course makes the game super crazy and you guys can contribute to the craziness. So that's what we've got going on there. And thank you for tuning in. Well, I'll be back next week with another fun episode. So stay tuned for that. Another what if episode. So I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for being here, everybody. See you guys later. Bye. To plug into everything else we're doing, check out robotsradio.net. Also, look up the Robots Radio YouTube for videos about Fallout and other things. And check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash robotsradio. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.